Okay, guys. So, we're going to do just one oracle. This is our build order. Cool, 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 cool. I have been thinking about changing the build order to get the gateways first and then go for the twilight just to make it a little bit more safe. And I think that's fine. Yeah, let's let's do it that way. Why not? And then we can go we go three more gates, then twilight council. Yeah, but then the, the, the thing is it gets delayed too long. Nah, fuck it. Yeah, leave it the way it was. Leave it the way it was! We're trying... I mean, we should be fine. With an early oracle off one gate, we should be fine. I mean, you have to scout. The whole point is you need to learn to scout as Protoss. Um, <clears throat> if you're playing a Stargate build anyway. All right, all right, all right. What's up, guys? We are going to be showing you guys a beginner to advanced how to play Stargate into charge. This is a really good fundamental way of playing Protoss. We're going to start here up against Maul, who is a Silver League opponent. And then we're going to go all the way forwards and show you guys how to do it up against Masters players and add some details. So to start out, guys, we've gone 14 pylon into 16 gate. We're then going to queue that uh, scout across the map. We then go for a 16 gas geyser as well and just keep tapping that probe key. want to keep that probe production going. And awesome. So we are going to be going for 16 gate, 16 gas. Just going to set up my little camera locations. I like to go straight along the edge of the map with my expansion pattern. And uh, once you've got 16 on minerals, you can just rally onto your gas geyser there. And because we're playing Stargate, we're going to pull one off minerals onto gas. Now that's a pretty advanced thing. If you guys don't do that, that's, that's totally fine. Now we're going to rally our 19th probe down. This guy's just going to go for a scout and then hide behind the natural. Same as we did back in Bronze to GM. So if you guys are wondering about any of the mechanics I'm doing, anything, a lot of this stuff is kind of referencing Bronze to GM. So definitely check that out so you guys get a good idea of like the raw mechanics and so on. Okay, so you pause at 20 supply, you build a nexus, you get then a nexus, then a cyber core, and then you can go back to building probes, okay? Now, my probe was not able to leave his base, which means he walled me in. Fair enough. Doesn't matter. We then go 21 supply second gas, build another probe, and then 22 supply second pylon. Now you'll notice that my supply is not actually the numbers I said. It's one less. That's because we just lost a probe. So don't worry about that. Now we've got 16 on minerals, three on gas, and we rally to the other gas geyser. And once you've got three rallied onto the gas, that's when we can move things. Now, we're doing the beginner build, and guess what's the most useful unit in general early? The Stalker. As we get more advanced, we're usually going to be building a depths if we can, but it's all kind of matchup dependent and stuff. So we're going to start out just going Stalker, We'll get the Stargate down, <clears throat> and then we're going to go for Warp Gate. Now, if you want to just go Stalker and Warp Gate together and then delay your Stargate a little, that's totally fine. And you can see we're going to pull one off gas, and we're going to rally down to our natural. Now, we want to go Chrono Boost, Chrono Boost at this stage, and then our next Chrono Boost energy we can use on the Oracle when it comes out. If you want to only do one Chrono Boost, then it's okay, and then you'll actually be able to Chrono Boost the Oracle when it starts. But hey! We're talking about options. This is meant to be a beginner build. Let's slow it down a little bit. Let's stop focusing on all those little intricate details, shall we? So, <clears throat> normally we'd have a probe scout seeing if they've expanded or not. So we're going to just send a probe outside my opponent's base just to see if he comes at me with a big attack, since we don't have that information. We've got that oracle. And notice, guys, we're going to use the minimap to rally this. So I've just right-clicked on the minimap. And notice, we can still get the energy to chrono that pretty soon. And that's up next to there, next to the main. So that's what I call a staging point. Also, when you build the Oracle, get another pylon. And next up, we want to go straight for Twilight because we're going straight into charge of just one Oracle. Okay? <clears throat> All right, so we've built two Stalkers. Now, if you want to just build a third Stalker, that's totally fine, guys. I think we'll go three Stalkers by default. And from then on, we're going to be going into just uh, basically getting up our production and all that stuff. Let's build one more pylon here. We've got this guy on control group two. So we've got control group one, control group two. Or two and three is what it actually shows up as for me. Now at this point, guys, when you're at 40 probes, you don't need any more probes. We want to build three more gateways and start charge. And you want to chrono boost that. We're going to add those gateways to my control group. If you guys just use the pre-control group button, that's totally fine. And whenever you're ready here, two bases, two gases, whenever you're ready, just grab that oracle by double tapping the key and send that in. And what we're going to do is we're just going to turn its laser on and we're going to just try and attack some SCVs. There's no enemies nearby, so I'm not even microing it. I'm just watching it. And now we see, oh, he's coming in. So run away and turn that laser off, okay? And we're just going to cue him 
to move around to the other side of the map. So he's noticed moving moving through a very safe path over there. And we did that once again using the mini-map. Now let's go home, Chrono Boost Charge again. And what do we need? We're already added three gateways. So now we want to add four or five more gateways. Okay, guys? So we'll add five gateways in this scenario. Once you've added those, build some more pylons. You want to make one sentry, add that to your army key, and all you're doing from here is zealots. The sentry is for guardian shield. So if you think about it, we've got nine gateways. Once you've put all those gateways down, you also want to move a probe across the map to build a pylon. Now, I've already got a probe over here, and that's going to be our warp in point right there, okay? Bonus points if you go ahead and build a gateway there. Now our oracle, look, it's on a new attack angle, which he's not going to be used to. Oh, yes he is. Ah, there's a missile turret. So try not to lose your oracle, guys, because it gives you so much information. So if I just immediately ran away, that would have probably been the better move. And what's cool about this is you can use the oracle. And what you want to do is you want to use revelation, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to say, go there, revelate that area where there's usually units standing and then run away. And that way it just gives me info on what's going on in the game, okay? Now at this point, you can see, we're gonna warp in zealots and then build like four more uh, pylons because as your production ramps up, you get supply blocked very easily. We're gonna move across the map. Like I said, bonus points if you build a gateway. For those who don't know, if you just warp in on a pylon, that's gonna take 11 seconds to warp in. Look how slow that is. But if it's next to a warp gate or a nexus, then that's gonna warp in way quicker. So once, if you build that way ahead of time, then your attack is also really nice. So I warp in more zealots, and guess what? Build a few more pylons. And when do you want to attack with this? Well, basically, once you've got charge and at least 16 zealots, which is two rows, it's usually a decent time to attack. But I'm, I'm just kind of like, hey, why not wait for one more warp in? Let's do it. One more warp in, add those to our army, and now let's once again do the revelation, see what we're going into. Notice we revelate just in the area, and we've already shift-clicked back. We don't need the hands on the keyboard. And what we're going to do now is we're going to get the sentry, move it in front of the army because it's slower, just a bit. And then we go A move. And we're going to activate Guardian Shield, hands off the keyboard and mouse. And we're attacking at 7 minutes with what looks like, I think that's 32 units it said. So 32 units, um, 3 stalkers and a sentry. So 28 zealots at the 7 minute mark. You guys are going to win every single game you play in the lower leagues if you attack with this number of units or anything even close to it. Now, obviously, we don't have detection. We don't have much that shoots up, but we could also have hit this attack about a minute earlier as well. And we also can scout anything that comes our way because we've got that oracle, right? So this is the real secret to why are we opening? It's not about the damage the oracle did. That's a bonus. It's about spotting what is there when we come in. So you know what we might do on the next wave, guys? We might actually focus on the oracle, fly over the production, see what we're up against, and then go for the SCVs. And I think that might be a really cool way to make sure we're focusing on the correct thing. Normally, you can kind of see what they're up to while going for the SCVs, but since the whole point of this is to get a single Oracle to see everything that happens, and then we're beelining towards what is just lots of Zealots, we're not taking extra gases, we're just making a lot of gateways, and just getting down the rhythm of getting those gateways quick, getting charge, it gives you such a powerful ground army. But we've also got this scouting so we can react and adapt as needed. Let's take a look at it. How do you balance looking at the minimap? I find myself missing enemy units because I'm doing something on the main camera. Oh, that's fine. Just get more map vision and over time you'll train yourself to do it. The more practiced you are. So for me, if I always throw gate, 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 gate in like a nice, neat formation at the same time, I don't really need to look at my screen too much to do that because I've done it so many times. So I can go and then I can go back to glancing at the minimap. But the less practiced you are with the build, the harder you're gonna have a time watching your minimap, right? You're gonna have to rely more on getting the attack alerts and that sort of stuff. All right, guys, let's go one more time. So we put the gateway down, we drop the chrono, we then drop the gas, and then we keep queuing up these probes, okay? Now, if we want to be really advanced, we can stack probes. We're going to keep it really basic. I'm going to try and slow down as much as possible, okay? So you probe. Once again, guys, we're just going to scout the base and then hide behind the natural expansion so we can see if my opponent expands or not. Once you're on 16 probes, change that rally point onto the gas geyser. And remember, we can also pull one off minerals onto gas because we're doing a Stargate build, so we need a lot of gas early. Thank you very much for the cheer. Player is busy. Um, oops, we were one probe short. Uh, rally back to the gas once this guy comes out. 
And it looks like we're playing another Terran player in this game, guys. So we've got uh, Kaivek, who is a Platinum player, I believe. Our probes are under attack. Now remember, we're not building probes because we're at 20 supply. So we're going to build a Cyber Core. So it's Nexus, Cyber Core, and then we resume probing. Okay. Then 21, we build a second gas. And then 22, we build a second pylon. Oh, look, so he's following me. But we've already seen there's an expansion, so we can just go home. Let's build that 22 second pylon, which apparently I didn't have the extra probe queued up, so I built it to supply early. Not a big deal. But guys, what are we doing? We're going to be going, okay, get three on the gas, and then we can uh, go forwards. Now, once again, I'm actually going to go Stalker and Warp Gate at the same time, guys, just because that's kind of something that you guys will be a bit more familiar with from Bronze to GM, um, if you've kind of followed along there. This will delay our Stargate slightly, so if you guys want to you feel comfortable going ahead and, and going straight to delaying Warp Gate, going Stargate, then Warp Gate research, definitely bonus points for that. But I'll leave it up to you guys what you decide to do. I'll show you guys. It doesn't change too much. Stargate's about 15 seconds later. Warp Gate's about 15 seconds faster. So here we go. Reaper's going to come in. We'll just be able to push him back and go back to Chrono Boosting Probes. Chrono Boosting Probes. Build our second Stalker. There was a little bit of downtime there. Notice we didn't queue it up straight away. We need to make sure that that Stargate does start. And we're just queuing up lots of probes here. Stalker's just going to hang halfway between the main and the natural. We have a Stargate, which we're already rallying across the map. And we're going to do the scouting with it this time, remember. So we're going to actually go straight over this production area, just to check if there's anything that we need to react to. So look at this, my opponent's try-harding it. We're just going to A move there, and we can put the Stalker there. So we have one covering both entrance. We've got an Oracle on the way. What do you do after the Oracle? You always build a pylon. And then the Twilight Council, right after that Oracle starts. If you don't build the pylon then, you will get supply blocked on 46. And you will join every Protoss player that's ever existed for getting supply blocked on 46. Because we all we all do that. Terrans, Terrans feel that pain. Zergs don't go to 46 supply. So um, they're they're excluded. They're, they're a bit better. Oh, uh, third Stalker starting up now. We forgot to do that. And guys, remember, at this point, as soon as the Oracle pops, we're going to put that on that number two. So we've got number one, our Stalkers, and number two, our Oracle. And we're clicking that not into the base, just outside. So when we're ready, we'll go click it. Now, notice we're already at 40 probes, guys. So this is as many probes as we need. Let's build those three extra gateways and start charge. Remember, we do those two things at the same time. Add the gateways to our hotkey. And now, when we're ready, grab the Oracle. Let's fly it in and see what we can do. All right, so we're just going to kill that Marine, because why not? He's out on his own. Maybe kill an SCV or two. Now, if you shift click here, that's going to give you bonus points. Um... Let's just imagine he's defended this, guys. Let's imagine some Marines came. What do we see? So I'm going to turn the laser off, and we see a tank. We see a bunker, and we just see two barracks. Okay, no worries. Now, what does that mean? A lot of people will be like, what does it mean? What does it mean? Pig, 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 give me the breakdown. It's way too early to think about that. You guys shouldn't be thinking, what does it mean? What are they doing? If you're always worried about what your opponent's doing, you're not going to be able to play a confident game of StarCraft. All I need to see is... Is there like a fusion core and he's building a battle cruiser? That will be a specific response. Do I see six barracks with no add-ons and 30 marines already built up? Okay, oh shit, I need to build defense. But outside of those extremes, you really do not need to react to anything, okay? So that's kind of the way we're gonna do it. So anyway, we're grabbing my army, we're making that one sentry for guardian shield, we're swapping into uh, all zealot production and look at this guys are building lots of zealots by sending that probe across the map which we could have sent across a lot earlier now let's do a tag once again tag and then shift click it backwards so we can see he's got a liberator bunker marines building up his reapers being a bit of a dickhead that's fine charge is now done and uh where do we want to build this warp in pylon maybe like a lot of people when i see noobs do it i'm always like build it and they build it there i'm like guys that's literally the path his units will move on if they move out instead build it hidden off to the side or back a little bit further is going to be way better i say that and i stumble across him building a third command center anyways uh let's keep tagging the front and let's move across the map now guys i'm making lots and lots of zealots i'll make another pylon or two even though we've got plenty of supply free always better to have more rather than less and if you guys find yourself always floating money at this stage, it's totally okay. Rather than building five gateways to go to nine, you could build, fucking, I don't know, eight gateways. You could go to 12 or 13 gateways. Anyone who's watched me teaching my wife, 
how to play StarCraft, you'd be well aware of how silly the amount of gateways I get her to build is sometimes, just because I know she's going to forget to produce for a few minutes. So I'm like, Dot, just make 14 gateways. For a while, she was making like 16, 17 gateways on two base. That got a little bit silly. So anyway, uh, we're going to try and attack. This time it's 6 minutes 40 with a similar work account to the previous game. Keep warping in Zealots. And let's go. Now, we don't have anything that shoots up other than these couple of Stalkers. So we're going to try and click those on the Liberator. Other than that, everything is just kind of trying to shove on through here, seeing if we could get through. Now, notice he's hold position the SCVs, guys. So what I've done is I've selected a few of these Zealots and actually clicked them on those SCVs to try and kill them. Because if I didn't do that, a non-attacking SCV, a hold positioned or a stop command SCV, the problem that you're going to have with that is that it actually is lower attack priority. So a hold position SCV, your units are going to go, no, there's Marines behind it. Attack that instead, it's higher priority, which makes sense until you realize that your Zealots can't get past. And your Zealots will just go, nyeh, 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 nyeh. And they will just they will just basically spaz out on the front there until you actually tell them to do that, assuming your opponent's fully blocking it off with the Zealots. So just want to show you guys that one more time. Because if we didn't click on that Liberator, by the way, our Stalkers and our Sentry wouldn't have targeted it. So if we, luckily we target, and the Liberator automatically targets our Stalkers and Sentries because it says Zealots aren't a threat to me, those are. So likewise, if I don't target it, it will shoot down my anti-air. Now notice he pulls SCVs here, guys, and he does hold position them just at this point. Unfortunately for him, it's a bit late. He's already let the S some of the Zealots in, but some of these Zealots here are going to bug out a little bit. So we're going to put this... See, these Zealots are all kind of stuck, and those SCVs on hold position, so really cool move by Kyvek. Buys himself a bit of time. Unfortunately for him, a, a, too many of the Zealots had already slid through, and then I just boxed those Zealots and clicked on those SCVs to open the hole as well. All right. I think you guys can see the power of going for the attack and keeping it really simple, right? Keeping it very, very simple. So... I would like anyone out there who's playing against this, guys, if you guys want, you can you can try and um, destroy me. You guys can cheese me if you're playing against me. Guys, if you guys think, oh, guess what? I have no detection. You can proxy a Banshee. You guys can do whatever you want. So please, if you guys are playing against me, throw whatever build you want against me so I can show you guys how to react to that. I'd love some cheesy builds or anything. Let's see how we go. Uh, what's the order repair hotkey? So the order repair hotkey is whatever your repair hotkey is plus alt. So you can always hover over the command card in the bottom right, assuming you don't have the cancer setting on. Enable simple command card, turn that shit off. Um, you should be able to see see whatever your thing is. So it should just be, yeah, Alt-R is the default on standard hotkeys. Yeah, for me, it's Alt-Closed Square Bracket. Um, <laughs> All right, guys, we got ourselves a 3,100, almost 3,200 Zerg player. Now, against Zerg, already a difference. We want to wall off at the front of the base. Now... If you guys are doing the beginner build, you might always want to do this. So this is a bit of a mistake here that I started walling off in the main because I was playing Terran and I was like, oh yeah, you know, wall off in the main. Like, that's fine. Just build it next to my base. But if you guys just want to make things simple, if you're actually in bronze, silver or gold, wall off at the front every game just so you get good at walling off. And that's going to make you way more consistent. Okay, so we're going to go for the gateway on one side of the wall, still go for the scout get the chrono boost, get the gas. So it's the same build order. It's just that we have to rally that probe down there a little bit earlier to make sure we get that pylon started on time. All right, so uh, we're gonna go through the base now and just kind of see what's going on, see if my opponent's expanding or not. I will also be doing free-for-alls and all sorts of other things this Sunday for those who are watching live, so. Uh, don't worry, guys. Anyone, Anyone's welcome to that. There'll be all skill levels welcome. I think the commander mode will probably try and keep our players around similar level. Probably all below diamond, but yeah, we'll see what happens. All right, guys. So we're going to go for the Nexus and then the Cybercore. Remember, we're pausing on 20 supply. We see my opponent's gone for a hatchery. So we don't really need to worry about anything, right? That's the point of the scout is like, oh, you're not on one base. Like, you've expanded. Cool. Continue the build as normal. Nothing to react to. So you're going to notice a big theme. We're getting used to scouting. But we're not really paying that much attention to scouting just yet, right? We're just kind of like, eh, just check nothing crazy is happening. That's it. All right. So you guys can see I had uh, this probe scout rallied to the minerals. So it was messing up the counter and counting as me having 16 out of 16, even though one of those workers was basically all the way out of the map. So just be careful with that. 
can throw off your perception of what's going on sometimes. All right, so guys, we're gonna go Stalker again, just because we're used to it, but we're gonna delay Warp Gate. I think as in general, this is something that's pretty easy for you guys to get used to. So I think getting used to delaying Warp Gate, totally fine. Allows us to get the Stargate and then we go for the Warp Gate research, okay? We also saw an Overlord up there, so we can go shoot that guy. So now we get Warp Gate. Now, in this matchup specifically, I'd normally be advising you guys to go Adepts. Um, so, if you guys want, you can still just build Storks. We're going to let that escape, by the way. I'm just going to shoot it twice as a warning. <laughs> we'll build a second Stalker before going into, like, Zealots. Just to, uh, just to... And guess what? The Lings are here. So, good thing we let that Overlord survive, guys. And we don't really need to micro here. That's totally fine. Okie doke. <clears throat> So we're gonna build a pylon here. So we got Oracle, Pylon, and then what comes after that, guys? Twilight Thanks Council. Thanks for the Bezos box. So we need to use the Twilight Council to wall off our base. I am here in the shadows. So as soon as we get 100 gas, we'll be doing that. The Oracle is rallied across to here. Once again, this will be a bit of a staging point. There shouldn't be a base there um, on this map. Twilight Council goes down. And remember, what do we do after the Twilight Council? Three more gateways. We want to hotkey that oracle as it's going out of the map because this allows us to do jump to main army, jump to second army, main army, second army, just by double tapping those control groups. One of the most useful things you can use. And we still need to build about four more probes to saturate this base. So we're queuing up four more, building one more pylon. And guys, whenever we're ready, let's go in with that oracle. Okay, so we're going to go in, turn on the laser beam, and then we're just going to run away. So it's queen shooting us. So we killed two guys and we run away. Now, something we're missing here is, hey, we want to do scouting, right? So what's more important is actually scout. And if you scout the expansion and you see lots of workers, then you know your opponent can't be doing an all into you. So that's the main scouting versus Zerg, okay? Now let's get charge going and let's get that sentry that we love so much. And what happens next? One, two, three, four, five. Get those five gateways and let's send a probe on the map, shall we? So... We're going to send a probe down to, I don't know, over here, maybe. Not too close because he's a Zerg player. We'll build a pile on there. Behind this, we've got all of our gateways coming up. And let's make sure we build extra pylons, just powering the gateways, just so they can't be depowered too easily. Let's come in one more time and just do a tag and then run away. So remember using that shift click there. So we just do the, the revelation or tag as we call it and queue it back to safety. And we see lots of drones, lots of gas means he can't be making mass roaches, mass zerglings, mass banelings. It means we don't have to worry about anything. And guess what? We're already past the danger zone anyway. Why? Because, well, we're making mass zealot. We want to fight. So if he comes and fights me, I'm going to be super happy, right? Build a gateway at your proxy. I like to put a camera location at my warp in point when I'm playing Protoss. And let's move over there and get ready for our attack. And remember, guys, if you find your opponents are being quite greedy and defending this sort of attack and they have way higher work account than you, Maybe you should just hit with your first 10, 12 zealots like this. If you hit pre six minutes, think about how hard this is for the opponent to react to, right? And you could still be rallying tons of zealots then. Or you can wait for 30 or 40 zealots. There's so many different things that you can do here. Okay, so let's go one more round of zealot warp ins and let's go. We're gonna hit it six minutes this time, guys, with about 20 zealots, um, 24 units in total. And let's go, all right. So, what are we going to do, guys? We're going to, remember, we have to attack move, and then we need to just kind of, like, hands off the keyboard. So, if you've done your job, you should usually be able to win here. Is there any important micro? Well, we could Guardian Shield, right? And move right up there. We also could Force Field behind the Roaches. Now, notice we're just trying to move that Sentry up forward. And then, every now and then, you just warp in your Zealots, add them to your control group, and you want to right-click these in, because you can't give them attack move commands yet, guys. Do another guardian shield. And if you don't right click them, they're just gonna sit there. And Bloki King's done a really good job. See, so he's trying to do some nice hold position on the drones as well. I'm not doing any fancy micro, and we're just gonna keep on adding these zealots, adding them to control group and rally them in. And it's all just gonna be like, hey, can I overwhelm my opponent? by just aim moving Zealot. And he knew what was happening. Of course, Bloki King's been watching the stream up to now. He's a volunteer from my chat. 
And so it's putting up a really good fight, managed to get Roach's Roach Speed plus one. But I would say that's way too much tech. You actually don't really need any tech. You just need to get up as many uh, Roaches as you possibly can. That being said, has seemed to defend it, but because there's no workers on this base, I think we can just keep rallying Zealots and probably win. Now, obviously, something you can add here, because this build is far from optimized, the reason we're teaching it in this unoptimized fashion is because this is meant to be a building block for you guys learning how to do the build in a much more flexible way. If you guys want to go completely all in, obviously, we could be six workers less, right? And instead, just pull off gas completely the moment we start charge. Like, why would we... You know, why do we need to to do that? Now, obviously, these fights are getting worse. So what you should do if your fights get worse is you should stop going in like that. What you can do, though, is you could bring the Oracle in, right? Why didn't I do that? I can use the Oracle, turn its laser on, and uh, it can actually beat a Queen Heads on. He has Burrow, which is super cool, actually. And look, and he's so low on economy. But look at that. Very, very nice play. So we're going to try and revelate that. We're going to keep making Zealots. Um, remember I said you could make a Templar Archives to spend your gas? Or you could have just been six workers less and hit a faster, sharper timing. So what we're going to do is we're going to spend the next round of production. By the way, you can chrono your gateway. It's a super advanced thing. That makes the warp gate cool down faster. You see how they're uneven now. And you want to try and make sure you warp these in in even numbers so that you can make them all into Archons. But think about how strong four Archons makes this push. Super cool, right? Suddenly, that gas that we were banking up serves a function. Now, obviously, we're mining out, so this does kind of suck. So technically, if the game drags on, you do want to take a third base. And let's go, guys. So Zealots, Archons, and we're going to use the Oracle here to revelate the unit so they can't burrow and to turn on its laser beam as well. GG, well played. Bloki King played really good there, put up a really valiant effort. But um, yeah, essentially all we're doing, guys, is making a lot of zealots off of the Stargate. So we get full vision, a little bit of harassment and potential damage with the Oracle. And then we just get two mineral lines, two gases, a shitload of gateways, get a forward gateway up, and, uh, and we smash face. Uh, in general, if you guys just focus efficiently on putting all your money into one thing that is a sharp attack against your opponent, and it's a unit, you know, it's, it's units that scale well, uh, mass Marine Marauder, Mass Roach with Roach Speed, uh, Mass Zealot. These armies are so friggin' powerful because they're just efficient units. As long as you hit at a good time in the game, they're very powerful. But what's really powerful here is how quickly we saturated two mineral lines. So let's talk a little bit about what you guys should be checking in your game. And that is, when does our natural get saturated? How quick does this hit 16 workers? And this should be by 4 minutes 30 at the absolute latest. Because unless there's some harassment going on, something throwing off your game, guys. I think even 4 minutes, actually, by the looks of it. Look at this. So it, I actually had a slight gap in my pro production. So basically, just after the 4 minute mark, latest about 415, 420, you should have a full natural 16 probe, 16 plus 3, 3 there. And this is already, so 415, we're at 38 workers, which is the total we need. 16 plus 16 is 32, plus 6 on gas, 38. That's huge. Benchmark that every single game, and then benchmark when you're hitting your attack. When does your attack arrive at their base? In this game, I believe that was about 6 minutes, right? So what do I mean by benchmark? I mean write down the details, guys. Okay, so we're hitting outside their natural at 6 minutes 10, and we have 21 zealots, 38 probes, 2 stalkers, an oracle, and a sentry. We're at 89 out of 102 supply. We don't have any other upgrades, nothing else going on. And we are on a total of nine gateways at home with a 10th proxy gate warping in. Cool. So you can write that list down and then check that you've actually hit all those details. Maybe you hit a minute later with the same units. You know you've messed your build up, right? So these are the two benchmarks you want to check every single game, guys. When did I actually hit my saturation on Thanks my base? Box. And um, yeah. See, we've got, a, we've got a six minute or maybe earlier benchmark for the three base version. Let's add a benchmark in here uh, for our beginner one, okay? Benchmark, four minutes, 15, fully saturated, two bases, 38 probes. And then benchmark your attack timings. Some exam, you know, example from pigs PVZ on Stargazer would be, what was it guys? How many zealots was it? Let's write this out. 
21. 21 zealots, two stalkers, and sentry. Alright. 21 zealots, two stalkers, one sentry, one oracle, 38 probes, 10 gates, one including one proxy. Uh, and what time did we hit with that? Was it six, six minutes 10? Okay. And that gives you something that you can compare game to game and see how well you're executing so that you're not focusing on what your opponent's doing. The number one problem people have when they're first playing StarCraft is they obsess too much over what their opponent's doing. And until you've figured out the basics of how to efficiently macro and hit your attack timings and build up early game, you're gonna be making so many mistakes you're not even aware of. So it's really important you focus internally on what you can do better. And that's why we benchmark so we can actually see, am I getting better? Am I getting worse? And you can self-correct then. Because if you're a minute late, you can go back, check that replay and realize that you were supply blocked a few times or you just missed a lot of pro production. You were a bit distracted that game and you can kind of focus on fixing that in the future ones. Anyway, guys, um, okay, so we're going to go into the more advanced version. Now, this is going to be a bit special for PvP. Um, so your opponent will try to kill you on one base more often in this match than the others. So you do need to hide your probe at their four, send it in just after three minutes. If no expo at 320, then swap to void rate, stalker, battery production. And if you can squeeze out a robo, that's good. So there's this like little list of PvP points there. Other than that, um, the whole point is you can adjust your Stargate units based on how you feel. I want to be Phoenix focused where possible because it's gonna be great. Nah, it's good. Good luck, have fun. Um, because I think Phoenix are quite an advanced and fun unit to use, but in PvP, generally it's much easier if you just open up with a single Oracle. And I actually, um, I beat him canning with this yesterday when I was trying this out on the ladder. It's a bit of a shit show of a game, but um, that's pretty sick because I'm canning is like 6K MMR and he's actually really good. All right, guys, we're going into our first game against a Diamond player, Nick. They're like Diamond 3, Edge of Plat 1. But most importantly, we're going to be starting to show you guys now the more flexible 3 base advanced version of this build order, uh, where things can get a little bit dicier. You have to be a bit more flexible sometimes, but I think it's much more exciting. And interestingly, we're doing PvP to start off. So this one's even more special because I know you guys realize PvP could be a much more aggressive matchup. So we are going to have a few special rules that we'll start out with. So first things first, we're going to wall off here. You can wall off on the front if you want. Um, for some reason, I just really enjoy the wall off here because you can still build a shield battery on the low ground with that pylon, um, but it's just a bit easier to fall back and defend to if you need to. Now, we're going to get this gateway a little bit late, but, you know, I am incompetent. It's fine. It's fine, guys. Talking and playing is hard, man. All right, so we've got... The gate, the gas, corner of the probes. We want to get a second gas up in just a moment. Uh, you can go there. Now, it is going to be a one gate expand, guys. And this is actually kind of all the rage in PvP anyway right now. But it's kind of nice because this keeps it just more similar to what we're used to doing. Don't forget to build your second pylon because there's a good chance they'll block your expansion. So we want to get that second pylon and the second gas down here in PvP. So you can already see this is a bit more like a PvP build the way we're doing it. And uh, we actually see a Nexus already. Whoa, my opponent's gone Nexus first. Fascinating. Okay. I kind of wish I went for a super quick Nexus now, but that's all right. Um, we'll get the Cybercore, creating a nice little narrow choke point there. And um, my opponent here has gone Nexus first. So what we want to do is just stick to the normal build in terms of get out of Stargate unit as quickly as possible. But you're going to notice because we went double gas, this is all around the high level meta of people blocking your expansion our in PvP. So the Nexus is a bit delayed. And we've got guys on both gases now. And okay. Uh, we're just going to send that probe home. We've seen he's actually getting a forge. Wow, that I was not expecting. My opponent's a real funky player, I like it. We're gonna get a third pylon. Now you could build a stalker here, as long as your stargate's on time, that's fine. And we can rally that over to the front. And then you wanna get a third pylon, and then warp gate. So normally building a few stalkers early, pretty important, because we've already talked about how stalkers are the better fighting unit early on, in general, right? But especially in PvP, a more aggressive matchup, I mean, that's gonna come into play a lot. So we're building another stalker as well. Is I, I, I think he, okay, Nick's doing some funny, funny business. I like it, I like it. All right, so we're gonna try and just do some very light pressure with the Stalkers and we'll rally the Oracle over. 
What do we do once we start the Oracle? We go straight for Twilight Charge and we follow the normal build. Now the difference is going to be a bit different actually because in PVT we might actually go straight for a third base. Same with PVZ here. Not in PVP. Alright, so he's getting a cannon on. So we're just going to try and kill some probes. And that's fine, guys. We don't actually need to do that much damage here. I should have already chronoed that. It is what it is. Keep building those. We're going to go Twilight. And some extra gateways, okay? Got the Oracle going over there. So this is looking very similar to what we were doing with our beginner build, right? Um, somehow those guys aren't rallied onto minerals. Don't ask me why. That means my minerals is very low. And we're Stalkers are just going to go home. Why, why screw with it? He's already built Static D. We're building probes. The Oracle's going to go in now. And oh, his cannon's not ready. So I'm just going to kill three probes and run away. And the reason for that is because we want to give him just a chance here. Um, we'll still kick his ass. Don't get me wrong. Guys. I'm not, not giving him that much of a chance. How is... I don't understand. Why are there probes still idling here, guys? Am I just messing up my rally points? It's weird. <laughs> Uh, then you want to go for a third base, get a pylon there, get charge. Uh, if you want to keep making stalkers, if you're under any threat, usually you want to go up to about six or seven stalkers, depending on, on how much you have to. But the quicker you can get charge out and then just build zealots, the happier you are. But this is naturally the scary part of the build, where because you're not making blink, if your opponent does the standard thing and gets like a critical mass of blink stalkers out, there is a moment where if you've only got like three zealots and they have three, you know, eight stalkers with blink, they basically take no damage we killing. And that's going to continue as, as time goes on as well. So as charge gets faster, we feel safer. As we get up our gateway count, we're probing our third this whole time, by the way, all on just two gases. We're going to be good. So we're going up to eight gateways now. Still rallying probes out to that third. We're just going to um, put stasis traps to block our opponent's third base now. He's got a Stargate. Oh my lord, what is he doing? This is crazy player we are playing. He's got Void Rays building, my lord. Okay, guys. So this is where normally you'd just keep massing zealots and hit a timing. But because our opponent's turtling up, we're going to do a anti sky toss reaction. So what are we going to drop? Double Forge, double Gas. And we're also going to drop double Gas there. We're also going to take a fourth base here. So this is the same sort of thing that you want to do. If your opponent's playing... Uh, we're just going to send a, a few zealots around the edges, make sure we're not getting proxy. If your opponent's playing, like, um, mass planetary nexus, right? You see a planetary in there, anything that's a big sign of turtling. Cannons, batteries, and sky units. Basically, your opponent can't attack you for a very long time. So there's two ways you deal with that, guys. You either go very uh, all-in, or you go very greedy. We're going for the very greedy response here, okay? Which is double upgrades, blink, and we're gonna swap into stalker production, of course. Now you might think stalkers aren't great versus void rays. Absolutely correct, you would you would be right. That is an intelligent assessment that you have made there, internet. Uh, problem for him, I'm gonna have four bases and double upgrades. So it doesn't really matter. Also, if we can get just a stasis trap here, that would be huge. So let's just put a stasis trap, I mean, we can Block it, block it. And we're just making stalkers here. And we're just stopping him from taking an expansion. Meanwhile, I've got one base, two base, three base, and now four bases, okay? So, blinks on the way, one one's on the way, the stalker count's growing. And from here, <clears throat> you can basically um, take your fist of stalkers and shove it down your opponent's throat. There are... It's, it's, it's the, you can do the crassus, guys. You can, you can get the gold and pour it down your opponent's gullet. You can, you can be like, hey, brother of the Khaleesi, pimp ass piece of shit. How, you greedy bastard. How, how about some gold down your throat, dude? Um, so we're a bit high on gas, low on minerals. We do need to saturate that base. We can also take a fifth base if we want here as well. And the cool thing is if they swap into ground, you're very happy to just run over them with zealots. And if they just play air, you basically just kill them with stalkers. So what's the army look like, guys? There is two void rays, a stalker, and some batteries. 
So there's no reason for us to let him get that up. Let us to let him get that up. So we're going to just make some zealots here as well. Um, and let's get that fifth base going just so we can keep this economy rolling. This base is half mining out. So we're going to just transfer those guys ahead of time. And we only want minerals on our new bases. Okay. We're going to make more zealots to help us come through here. And the stalkers, you want to control click those. And what you want to do is you want to move up and you want to blink and you want to one shot the flying units. And the cannons as well. Why not? We're going to pull back and then when blink's ready, notice we can just basically two shot the carriers. And then we can run away again. And we can just grab all of our stalkers and we can go doo -doo -doo, one shot the void ray. And we don't care about losing the zealots. We don't even really care about losing the stalkers as long as you get in there early enough to not get let them hit some crazy critical massive units. And as you get up to like five bases, six bases, you build a silly gateway count, okay? So we're going to run in again, and if those carriers are anywhere in the open, then they will get taken out very easily. And he's aware of this, that's why he's trying to hide them. Nothing left in that mineral cluster. Alright, so we've got 2-2 two, two on the way, we're going up now to 14 gateways, you might think that's enough, you would be wrong. Take another base, and this just is basically you beating your opponent without having to fight them. And that's what you guys, a lot of people always ask, how do I beat Mass Raven? How do I beat Sky Toss? And this is the answer. Alright, we're going to try and actually take out the cannons as well. And we're going to try and warp in enough stalkers here to beat these carriers as they come in for like a base dread. Where are you at, carriers? One of our pylons is under enemy fire. Okay, so we can go. There. Whoops. <laughs> I messed up that blink. We were using shift click there. So you can see this style forces you to play a very different style, but what's so good about this opening is you have scouting with the Oracle. So you have full vision. And you have a sick economic basis. So you're going to notice the difference between this version and the other one is we always get a third base. Now, like I said, there is a difference in the order. If you're playing PvP, you're only on one gate and a star gate. You need more gateways. So we go gate. We got twilight, gate, gate, gate. Just like we did with the two base build, right? If we're playing PvT or PvZ, we're going to drop the third base and then we'll go for the twilight and the gateways. Small adjustment, but something that we should note down here in the notes. So we'll put this down for you guys as well. Um, PVP, uh, yeah, uh, du, 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 du. in PVP, you also need more gates to be safe. So go Twilight plus three times gates before taking third Nexus. So that's a little bit of an adjustment. Whereas if you look at the build order, normally it's second gate early on only, and then you'd go for the 40 pylon third base. So you could do it that way. Actually, I forgot about that second. I'm going to be honest. I forgot about the second gate, guys. I forgot that it, that was in there. That second gate's kind of kind of nice. And then if you go for the two gates, you probably two gates and a star gate. Assuming they're not all inning you, maybe you could just stick to the normal one. You might. <laughs> I'm going to leave that as an option. <laughs> We're going to leave that as an option. Oh, that's fantastic. Uh, awesome source. All right. Now, the big um, danger window that we were talking about, guys, in PvP. And remember, this is not a tailor-made build for PvP by any means. But the fact that it can work there incredibly well is really cool. It's this whole period where if my opponent was in a more normal game, we'll kind of even... He's going blink. About this 5 30 minute mark, 5 minute 30 mark, you know, my opponent might be getting blink out and having like 10 stalkers. And that's why it's really important you get your zealot count up. 
because if you can't match their stalkers, they're going to be able to pick off zealots and pull away. But the thing is, if you ever like flank them or catch them with similar numbers of zealots, they're not really going to be able to kite you down at all. You've just got to make sure that you don't get caught being too greedy. If you say go 55 probes, third base, and they're doing a two base blink all in, they're going to have so many stalkers that they're just blinking back the weak ones and nothing's dying. And your zealots are just in too low number to ever get the critical mass to overwhelm. So that's going to be something in a more normal game that, you know, we need to keep our eyes out for. Generally speaking, though, um, one gate expand is pretty solid in PvP as long as you're just going for the second gas, the cyber core. If they're blocking at all, you build a zealot as well. And then you go for the Nexus and you get that really quick Stargate, which can both be a defensive and an offensive tool, which is really good. GG's. All right, guys, we've got another diamond opponent. It is another low diamond opponent, so a bit closer to platinum than high diamond, but we're going to be showing you guys the Terran version of the build. Now, if you guys want, like I said, you can just wall off on the natural um, every single game, and I would normally show beginners to just do that by default because I like the natural wall off. I think it's safe. It hurts you very occasionally if you let your opponent siege up outside your base, but generally, it's, it's just really nice, but... As you get to higher levels, we want to be really optimal. So what we're going to do in optimal play is we are going to go straight for this lovely high ground uh, gateway here. And with a cyber core down there, that's going to wall off our mineral line. So Reapers just can't be quite as annoying. And that's going to be the big thing. So our worker is going to go across and then A move to harass their worker that's building the, uh, the barracks and whatnot. And we're also going to double up all of our workers now. Let's let's really get that attention to detail going so you guys can see exactly what we're doing. So four bases up to the corner of the map is the pattern I'm going to go for this game. Um, one, two, three, four, and then maybe, uh, maybe fifth base in the back, actually. We do get this free three-quarter base. It's pretty nice. Should take advantage of it. Oh, my God. Okay, so a little slow to send this guy down to the natural. It is what it is, though. Let's just check that he doesn't have a second gas. He doesn't, just one gas mining. So we're going to block his base when we get a chance to. Uh, put down the Nexus on 20 and then the Cyber Core also on... Oh my god. Sorry, I haven't played this map very much. <laughs> I'm like, wait, what? And then at a minute 40, you want to start blocking the Natural. Because that's when they get it. And then 21 second gas. And 22 second pylon as well. So you notice here we blocked it already for long enough. We can leave now. And you just want to confirm that a command center does go down. And it does. There we go. Beautiful. All right, guys. Uh, we should have already started that pylon. We didn't yet, though. So that's a big mistake. So you're going to see this is going to finish. And we're not going to be able to build that stalker straight away. But guess what, guys? We're doing the advanced version of the build. So we're going to go adept, not stalker. Okay. Um, let's hide the stargate back here as well. So he has to come in pretty deep with a reaper in order to see it. Make sure you chrono immediately. Hopefully that makes up a little bit for the fact that we were supply blocked, except not really because you're always going to chrono that adept anyway. And that's especially bad on Moondance, guys, because the Reaper can get here very, very early. So something that I'm actually thinking about is on this map, it's even more important that you actually get that out on time. Now, <clears throat> I think there's an argument. I was talking to Hastam and Lambo the other week during my subathon, and um, let's get Warp Gate and another adept as well. Um, Harston was saying that, you know, he really likes going Nexus before Cybercore, which is what I've been showing you guys here, but he feels on these new maps, especially Moondance is one of them, it's really scary because the Reaper gets there so early, and that's really interesting, um, because that is definitely something you guys might want to do, like, Cybercore first, in general, until I get punished by people who do really tight Reaper openings consistently, I am the sort of player who wouldn't actually adjust at all. I'm the sort of player who's like, yeah, you know, I just ignore it basically until I get punished a bunch of times. And that's how I like to play is on the edge of greed. I think that's a pretty good way to play is don't worry about things too much in StarCraft until you actually start losing to them because there's kind of unlimited things to worry about. And oh, guys, look at that. Two barracks and a factory. So he's gearing up for what could be a very nice... Uh, marine tank push. Now we're taking a third base here very early. Remember, this is just what we do. Adding those probes one or two at a time. And we're continuing to build Phoenix. But we also need to get our charge up very quickly, right? That's part of the build. So let's go for that Twilight Council. And then just keep probing. And these guys can start harassing. Oh, I thought he'd be building a depot there. Oh, well. All 
right, we're just looking for SCVs or Marines out in there that we could pick off. Oh no, he's got lots of Marines in there. Oh my lord, that's a lot of Marines, guys. So we're just gonna pull out. All right, rally to your third base. Now, I forgot to get that second gateway, guys, and that's something we need to start remembering to do. Talking a bit about Hastam and Lambo, probably not as important as doing the build correctly. Keep building Phoenix, basically non-stop, because that gives you a lot of control. An immediate charge. We do want to get one sentry when we can afford to, but uh, it's, we can't really afford that just yet. All right, let's try and grab more units that are popping out. And what have we got? Starport and extra barracks. So I think Bromo Sapiens doing the build that we did recently, the uh, easy Terran build order, guys. And <clears throat> what's more important here is you can actually take a gap in probing, but you need to get to eight gateways as quickly as possible. And we're actually going to go nine and ten gateways because you guys know me. <laughs> a normal person stops at eight. Pig never stops today. And we're just going to keep picking up these SCVs. Now, so far, no third CC. Two barracks, already a sign of potential early aggression. And that's why my Phoenix have had to stay very active, because he technically could have done an earlier move out. And especially without the second gateway, I would have been punished for that. Now, at this point, there could be a push coming any moment now. So let's get a battery on each base. Let's make lots of zealots. And what we're actually going to do is we're actually going to put these guys on a run by key over here. Because I think one of the best things you want to do with a Zealot style is you don't want to fight them front on. Oh, oh, whoa, whoa. Um, we could use just a couple more probes. And we definitely need a lot more pylons and just constant Zealot warp-ins. And at three base minerals, two gases, you can keep building Phoenix if you want, but all you want to do is build Zealots. No upgrades with this style. You might be wondering, hey, where are the upgrades, you know? Um but it's not something you want to do. I could have gone for a tank there, but if he was quick enough with repair, it would have struggled anyway. So we're just going to keep warping in Zealots, and what we're looking for now with our scouting is, hey, is there a third CC? Is there a second engineering bay and an armory? We see a fourth and fifth barracks. He has a crazy marine count, guys. Holy shit, this build. Oh my god, the, just the, the sheer number of units is insane. This is the, I, mean, I, was, I was teaching this build the other day, and I'm still just shocked by how many frigging units it gets. It's actually wild. Um, I think he's already coming out now. He should be moving out, I think. Has he moved out? Okay, not quite. He's banking up. Now, I think that's because he realizes that my army's not going to scale too well. So if your opponent hasn't moved out yet, it's already this late. It's like, okay, I need splash damage. So we're going to get Templar Archives. We're building this in the front of our natural so that it dies when the push comes just before Stim finishes. We're thinking about a fourth base, but we're not really going to be using it. I think what would be better is if we actually built those forward pylons, similar to what we were doing in the lower leagues, guys. Right? I think that would make a lot of sense. Let's see if we can pick off some units as he moves out here. Um... Oh, he attacked his own thing, I think. Still making just tons of zealots, guys. And you can see we got these pylons up front. We're we just going to keep trying to intercept the reinforce. And we're going to run in with these zealots here as well. And then these guys are going to get ready for a great big uh, engage. So we're going to send those guys around the back, and then these guys here. And we're going to just giant A move, Guardian Shield. And we're going to try and move in for the Guardian Shield. We've got a crazy Zealot count. The Phoenix are coming in now as well. And it looks like we were able to take it down. Really great push by him. I think he should have pushed earlier and I would have had a harder time. Um, GG. Good execution by Bromo Sapien. Obviously, I'm playing way higher level here as well. Um, so, we're kind of jumping drastically up the skill execution there in terms of I'm being a lot more adaptive and flexible. But in general, always against Terran, we want to go fast Phoenix. The biggest thing we messed up with the build order, guys, and this is why it's hard as a Protoss player, once you get into Diamond and above, as any race, you need to play different builds for each matchup. So, when I'm teaching like this, and then I'm swapping 
not only beginner to advanced, but then also a different build for each matchup then. I've got four different variations in my head. I do get a little bit crossed over sometimes. Happens to me as well, even though I practiced this build quite a bit yesterday on ladder. So um, first things first, where's that second gateway, right? Remember in the build order, we have the second gateway. At, where is it? It's um, basically just after the Phoenix, around the time the Phoenix production starts. So about the latest would be here. So as long as it's ready for when warp gates finish, so as long as you start it by about 3.20, 3.30, you should be okay. But that gateway should have gone down a little bit earlier. And that just helps you react. If they do say Cyclone, Cyclone plus Marine Rally with two Cyclones, it allows you to just build a handful of Adepts and Zealots to go with your constant Phoenix production. And it's enough to staunch the flow of Terran and if not defend your third, at least cancel the third, but then kill a whole bunch of their units and still be in a good position. So, um, yeah. Are there any questions, guys? I never power up gateways at the right time, so even if I see the move out, I'm ruined. Very common, Oz Tasty. This is why I'm focusing on this build, because it's so simple. We're not bothering with gases. There's not a lot of tech. Even here with the advanced three base version, it's like, yeah, I'm building a third and I'm building a couple of probes for it, but it's like Twilight and then just gateways and chrono and just get the gateways, get the pylons. And mastering that is such a fundamental piece of Protoss, whatever style you end up taking it to. Getting your gateways on time, a big chunk of gates, getting the pylons, warping in units. It's its such a key piece of defending so many things. Hey, how you doing, Boxer Saint? Welcome. Welcome, mate. Thanks for, thanks for dropping by. I appreciate the comment, dude. Make yourself at home. Some, uh, there's, a, there's a trough somewhere in the back of the cantina. Somewhere over there, you can... Get yourself some slop. Have a good time. Uh, pretty good execution by Bromo Sapien. Now, Bromo Sapien should be building a Cyclone. If he had a Cyclone, uh, it would have made it much easier for him to defend. He did do a pretty good job of spreading his Marines, but if he just had one Cyclone in the main as well instead of one of these tanks, he could have um, defended the uh, the Phoenix a bit easier because they're a lot more punishing than the Marines, which aren't so mobile. But overall, pretty good execution of the build order, which we did a guide on the other day. So shout out to Bromo Sapien. Every time I flew through and saw just how many tanks and marines there are, I was like, Jesus Christ, like, this is, this builds towards such a scary push. So, well played, Bromo Sapien. Um, luckily, I knew exactly what I was up against because I know the build. But uh, because there is a second barracks, like, guys, if he doesn't go for the starport, he could actually just pump marines and tanks and actually just do a really scary combat shield, mass marine tank push, bring some SCVs, build bunkers. And something like that, it would be kind of tough because charge doesn't kick in in time to defend that. So I'd have to be throwing down reactive shield batteries and just fighting with like battery overcharge and like adepts and unupgraded zealots and phoenix trying to like pick off the units that are rallying across. It would be a very dicey fight, but uh, it would be a much more committed push if he were to push at that stage of the game as well. Yeah. All right, guys, we're stepping up the difficulty. We're playing the advanced version of the build and we are up against a diamond one player, kind of edge of masters there. Big step up from Diamond 3, so this is going to be interesting to see how the hell does this play out. Um, obviously against Zerg, we want to play Oracle, we don't want to be playing early Phoenix, and we could even play for a couple of Oracles. But what's really cool is this is actually not too different from what Hero uh, did quite a few games of um, in, in the recent past. Uh, before he was, you know, uh, it was going very blink heavy for a little bit, and then he started going for the charge style in quite a few games in i think it was king of battles where he did that oh i don't know if that reaches all the way to the edges i kind of misclicked where that pylon went down but i think it's okay just looking at that looks like it does reach the edges of the ramp so um we're gonna get maybe two oracles out with this style um so very similar we'll get a second oracle the second oracle can just make sure we can secure our third base and uh it should work out real nice. We'll send our probe across the map. Get that gas down. Gas is a little later this time around, but that's okay. Doesn't change too much. More important is really just remembering how important it is, guys, to pull a worker off minerals onto gas with any Stargate build. There's a reason why we mentioned this at the start. Just makes your build so much smoother really does 
This is the moment where I realize that pylon's blocking my nexus and I just GG out, guys. <laughs> like, new map, spree. We've seen my opponent has a hatchery on the minimap, so we don't need to worry. We're in a pretty good spot. Looks like a pretty standard build. All right, so we go 20, we pause supply at 20. Cybercore, we then resume probing. And we'll get that pile on there as well. We're just hanging out to make sure he's not saving up lava. So this is an advanced scouting tip for you guys playing against uh, Zerg players. When that pool finishes, if he has a bunch of Wriggly boys hanging around, guess what? They could all turn into Zerglings right now. He only has one saved up, so... Doesn't have the ability to do a super scary Zergling all-in. So you can see my pylon's pretty well timed here, and that it finishes right as that goes down. And we're just going to check for the third base. Let's get the Stargate up. And it's pretty important, we see the drone going out there, that we build another Adept. And we just go across, confirm that the third base actually went down. Our probes are under attack. Chrono Combat. probes, why not? Alright, so we killed two of these Zerglings, which is super yes. nice. The other Adept just sits at home. And remember, what do we do? Second gateway. So that second gateway here, probably don't want to do it too early. Now, if you guys don't want to go too hard on your Adept, you don't want to dive in and risk it, just shade in and see, are there drones? And if there's lots of drones, remember what does that mean? It means that our opponent is building economy and therefore cannot be all winning us. Okay? If you want, we can check one more time, but it's almost three minutes 30. Three minutes 30 is when Ling Speed kicks in off a normal build. We see more drones there, a couple Zerglings, but we also saw some drones popping up just at the end there, okay? So now we move out to the third base. I'm going to build one Stalker just to um, deny the vision. We're going to make another Oracle that'll go there. And it looks like, guys, I forgot to build the Pylon! We're talking about all the little differences here in PvZ, and I forgot to build the Pylon, so let's actually just keep building probes so that at least our economy is not slowed down. And let's also just shade this Adept into that nice little gap. Oracle's just going to dive in the main, see if we can kill a drone or two. So we'll just kill three drones and back away. I obviously could do more there, guys. But we're going to give my opponent a bit of a freebie. Alright. Behind this, we want Twilight. And... Two more gateways. We're up to four gateways now. We're going to warp in that stalker that I was talking about. Let's get one more pylon over here for production space. It also is going to spot nidus worms and stuff like that. And we can do one more. So we see lots of drones on this base, guys. What does that mean? Lots of drones means that my opponent is not all winning me. Can even throw a revelation. And we're going to start doing stasis straps. Now you might be wondering why stasis straps. It's because we don't have to watch them to do them. And that's really powerful. Because I'm really friggin' slow. I'm not. I'm not slow. I'm, I'm actually pretty fast uh, compared to a lot of you guys. But I, I don't like to look at things. I play from Australia. I play with quite a bit of lag. I um, Let's put a shield battery down. And you can see, guys, we're going to try and go for some adept pressure there. But otherwise, all we're going to do is just queue up stasis straps whenever these guys have 50 energy, okay? Did I make charge? Oh my god, I didn't make charge yet. Jesus, that's really slow. So we want to get four more gateways. Notice I always build them in nice little grids like that, so I can put them down really quick. And you know what? We're, on, we're going up to three bases, guys, so we should probably build even more. Let's go 10 gates, okay? We're going to keep chronoing that charge. We're also going to get a fourth base now. Let's go stasis traps, stasis traps, not to mention these adept shading in. Already rallying all the bases to that one. Shift click the adepts on the drones, don't really look at them too much though. The trick is don't stare at anything for too long guys. Just queue you guys back to safety, queue them up, don't actually actually micro them. And from here, what we're going to do is we're going to make Zealots. 
and then we're gonna make more zealots. Now from here, I could go double robo, double gas, and transition, or I could embrace the fact that I'm a baboon and just make zealots and get ready to A-move them across the map, okay? So, one thing you can do is start setting those zealots up to actually attack from multiple angles, and I think that's really powerful. At this point, I'm actually going to get the oracles over here, just on patrol paths, to give me kind of map vision of what's going on with the map. We're done with the research. We're building a few pylons around just so we have extra production space and kind of can build cannons and stuff as needed. And you can see, I probably could have gone up to about 12 gateways and I would still be struggling to spend my money just because that's what happens when you have all this production. So, at this point, let's assume we want to transition. Remember I talked about I can add robos, I can add Templar archives, I can do all that stuff. So let's do that, okay? Let's go Templar archives. Double robo, double gas, double gas, build some more probes. And what are we going to do? We're going to A-move the front with these zealots. We're going to rally some more as well. So these guys are just... Oh, he's here. Okay, so we're going to A-move his army, and then these guys are A-moving into his base. And you can see here, we just have so many units, because all we're doing is building zealots. And by A-moving them in multiple bases at once, you've got a very good chance of them doing a lot of damage. Now behind this, what are we doing, guys? We're going to change the rally points of all the bases, except this one changes to there. The idea being, this is a similar trick you do with Zerg, so the units are kind of popping out where they're needed. We're also going to go double forge, because we're doing Omega Macro, right? We want all of this stuff to happen at once. Now, I'm going to move command my guys back and forth, because they've already won the game. But we're going to let them just kill some of those. And you can see, if it's Roaches or Mortals, if it's Massling Bane, we'd be focusing on Archons. If it's no urgency and we've got time, we can actually just bank up energy and use them as High Templar. So we can play like Charge, High Templar, Archon. Um, now we see, oh shit, you know, he could come and kill me now potentially, right? Nothing left in that mineral cluster. We've completely mined out a mineral field. Okay. So we need more immortals. Desperately trying to get more money here. Trying to get more gas. Trying to chrono more immortals. And the idea here is, of course, we're just doing everything at once. We can do anything we want. This is not really part of the build. What I really want to show you guys is the opening and the fact that it can turn into obviously that very powerful attack. But it doesn't have to turn into that attack is the point that I'm trying to make right here with what we're doing. Um, we, we could transition off of it. We could build 15 zealots and then already be on the way. We could have one robo already from much earlier as well. Um, which is the way Hero did this, where he's actually like, I've got a robo, I'm still going for charge lots and running across, but it's more of a quick pressure of like 10 charge lots off eight gates, maybe warps in another eight and he roams on both sides and he does it. That's a much more advanced, flexible thing, but definitely something that you guys can uh, add in. And what is always the cherry on top of a Archon Zealot Storm Army? Well, it's the Archons, isn't it? Oh, okay guys. So we're gonna send all of our Zealots around the top side. And my army's going to go down the bottom. And the army is going to require a bit more micro. We're also going to get that prism ready to fly into the main base. Our base is under attack. Our base is under attack. Upgrade complete. And. Obviously our Zealots are tearing it up. You always want your Zealots to hit run buys, especially against Ravager Bane armies. The reason why you want to do that is because they run into Banelings otherwise. But if you're attacking in the back line, they're naturally going to end up fighting, guess what? Z -z 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 Zerglings, which is where the Zealots are actually good units, right? They're kind of shit versus Banes in a big fight. But if they're fighting against the, the Zerglings, it's a totally different story. You're like, oh, this unit's sick. They're so powerful. Um, and obviously having the base of gateways from earlier 
means you don't need to add those gateways later on. So you make a surprisingly quick transition into like, oh, make 10 Archons, make six High Templar and all this sort of stuff. And if you do get that economic growth um, that we were talking about, it's also just massive because you can be like, oh, I'm going to take, you know, five of these at once and stuff like that, right? Okay, that's going to go in there. Okay, where'd my High Templar go? Looks like uh, they all just got blown up by Banelings, so shout out to my opponent. I don't know when he managed to do that, but apparently when I was running back from the map, that did happen, so well played. He's attacking me in the top now, very well done. Really just keeping things very much annoying, and hey, I'm over here, now I'm over here. Our base is under attack. These guys, of course, should be able to just A move their way to victory at this point, because we just have way too much from the early lead that we had. But, um... Alright, let's go back and take a look at this. How does this play out in PvZ? And I've been really curious, because I didn't get a lot of Zergs when I was practicing this build yesterday. But, is it crazy to skip the Robo entirely? So, I think there's an argument behind yes, and I think there's an argument behind, well, no. But, I do think there's something to be said for getting that Twilight down earlier, and making sure that you do right on no later than about six minutes, about six minutes, maybe 6.20, you want to be arriving at their base with Zealots. The reason is, otherwise you give the Zerg a bit too much time to grow dealing with just two Oracles, maybe two Adepts poking and nothing else. So you really want to keep that going. And um, by going across with Zealots, you're going to force a lot of units. And the trick is, if, they, if they're just too low on units, Zealots basically just win the game. But if they don't, you can pull the Zealots back. If, if they've got plenty of units, you just pull the Zealots back on the north, and then you have a Zealot squad on the south, and it's really hard for them to secure a fourth. You keep cancelling their fourth. You can, like, use these roaming Zealot squads. And like I said, we've got so much money in this game. I mean, we easily could have gone Robo, Gas, Gas, Templar Archives, or Double Robo, double Gas, Gas. We could have done that here, and it wouldn't have slowed down anything that I did, right? So if you guys don't want to do this as an all-in, you can do it that way. Um, likewise, we forgot to get any forward gateways up, so it would have been huge if I got a pylon up here with a proxy gate, tried to maybe do the same thing on the bottom side of the map, that would have been massive, just having some form of forward warp in point, because otherwise you do get punished for not having the robo, right? If you guys want, you could just squeeze a robo in, get a prism out, this would be the pro way to do it, this is what Hero would do, then you can warp zealots in the main while attacking the third, that is a very cool way you could make this very explosive as well, and in a way make it a more powerful all-in attack, so... Uh, as it is, you guys can see, like I said, I just took way too long to get across the map with my Zealots. It's like seven minutes when I'm over there, and it worked in this game because I'm playing a Diamond player, but if I'm doing this at GM level, there is no way hitting it past seven minutes with like 13 Zealots is going to get the business done, all right? So we just took a bit too long. I think it's very important that you make sure the Zerg isn't being too greedy, and by getting over... 8 gate zealots doing a firm pressure is going to be a really huge way of doing it. Either way, though, you can see it's a similar format in every single one, guys. It is number one, get out a Stargate unit or two to do light pressure or up to five or six if it's Phoenix. Get damage done, see exactly what's going on, and then get up your gateways and your charge zealots, and it's such a micro-friendly army. It's all about your macro and your timings rather than how you engage, right? All these fights are basically attack moving zealots. It's maybe not your flavor, but I think it's a really good way to make sure your gateways are on time and um, and that you're actually, you know, building up in the way that you should be. So my opponent was up on 73 drones at this point, was actually ahead on economy, which is pretty good. But uh, yeah, we, we, we're just going to basically overwhelm and kill everything with the, um, the zealots. So GG's. All right, guys, let's have another go at the PVZ. Let's see if we can iron this one out a little bit because... That was a bit different. Um, this was the matchup that I had the least practice with prepping for this show. So let's see how it rolls out here with a bit more practice. So first things first, rally that first pylon to the low ground. Do anything you like. Cheese, normal, whatever. The whole point here is I'm just getting normal games. I've, I've been struggling to tell people what to do. They've been like, oh, so I have to play macro, right? Or I have to do this. I'm like, you can do anything you want. Guys, and I would actually encourage people to cheese this shit out of me, do crazy build orders, whatever, because that's going to allow us to see, like, 
how I adapt the build in those situations, you know? Anytime I do a build guide, people are always, oh, how do you react to this and that and that? And there's like, there's so many, there's endless questions like that. And it's like, man, there's, there's, there's almost too much to answer, but at least if we can show you guys a bit of adversity, hopefully give you guys a feel for how we might adapt in those circumstances. All right, guys, so we're making this more advanced now, this Stargate into charge. Um, super underrated style because especially because no one does it it's just so rare in pvz for someone to play stargate and charge pvt people are at least used to playing against it but uh protoss players and zergs are just like what the hell is going on man they get so confused when they see this now we can harass the minerals a little bit but we don't really need to that's just kind of bonus bonus apm if you want you could be like oh my mineral patch Ugh. otherwise we'll just patrol in there and keep an eye out we want the cyber core now. Go back to mining. All right. So you see here, we go back up. He's the third guy on the gas. 21 second gas. Put him back on minerals. And then what do we do, guys? We actually forgot to pull an extra off minerals onto gas this game, by the way. So this is a bit more like my... This is going to be a slightly slower Stargate. It doesn't change too much, but just a small thing. We can pull one guy off minerals onto the second gas, at least. Even it out a little bit. And then we'll replace him there. I forgot my second pylon, didn't I? Fuck, man. I've been live for too long today, guys. Oh, no. It's all right. Doesn't change too much. It just means our adept isn't going to be able to scout very well. He's still mining gas. And he's got a bunch of eggs there. So I'm very worried that I'm actually being um, speedling all in this game. Which is obviously going to be super tough. Since... Uh, I was supply block, so my adept super late. So this could actually be a fun one. So we get to show you guys how to play if your execution sucks balls. <laughs> All of you. Um, all right, let's go back in here and just see if there's any more lings kind of sneaking out at this point. The firstborn shall persevere. Okay. I, I'm really worried that there's going to be lings coming in. So we're going to chrono the second adept and hopefully that keeps me safe. Yeah. As I said, I was like, man, you know, it feels... Feels like it's going to be kind of scary here. Let's get that second gateway up. And remember, need that pilot. Um, if we want, we could build a shield battery here. But I don't think we need to. Yes, executor. So we're gonna wall off, guys. If you're worried about an all-in, these are some good safety measures. Alright, we're just gonna check we're not being banelinged right now. I'm assuming we're not. Gonna try and get that third base up. So we're gonna try and kill these zerglings. We're done with the You seek guidance. Okay. So we're gonna send one adept over there. We've got charge on the way now. Let's get some more gateways going. Uh, let's see what my opponent's up to. I don't think he ever took a third. Spire! Oh, check that out. Okay, cool. So this is one where you might think, okay, you know, we've got to react. But actually, I'm going to kill him um, with zealots. So what we're going to do is we're going to send one ze guy down that side of the map. We're going to put uh, adepts on each watchtower. And we're also going to send a pri pri guy down the other side as well. Oh, shit, 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 shit. Okay, never mind. He's actually building links. <laughs> Alright, we are going to build Phoenix just one at a time here. Okay. Successful. 
Okay, well, charge is finished, guys. And we're just sending those zealots in just before the phoenix pop. And we'll try and get blink as well. Oh, the supply block really hurts me here. So you see, we basically looked at it and said, hey, I don't think you can get up your muters before I get in with my um, my zealots. So that was my whole call there. Also, because I scouted it, he may have actually transitioned. He may have said, oh shit, he scouted it. We can't commit to that and canceled the tech. Doesn't look like that's the case. Let's get plus one air weapons. Uh, let's get a cannon and a battery in each base. Because that really helps you defend muters quite a bit. And it looks like he's only building the zealots, so that really hurts him as well. And um, cool, GG, well played. Uh, really scared me there. And we got to see some reactions, which are much harder if you don't get your adept on time. This is why getting your second pylon on time is so important because it gives you scouting. So if you can do that on time against any normal hatch first build, which is what we saw, we saw the timings were all normal. So just for knowledge, 52 second hatchery or 48 or 52 second hatchery, somewhere around there into, you know, gas and pool, both around between a minute 10 and a minute 20 around that, that general period. His gas went down a few seconds earlier. Um, your adept can come over then and see kind of am I being all in or not and if I was able to scout I would have had a bit more info so let's imagine it 245 three minutes maybe let's say three minutes I'm over here and I'm scouting what am I going to see guys I'm going to see drones popping out of that natural I'm going to see oh cool yeah you don't have a third and you mined more gas than normal but you're also not building lings or roaches right now and if I had that information Mommy. I could have got my third up a bit quicker potentially being aggressive with oracles and and that sort of stuff not being quite as paranoid with like building gateways and stuff because basically i was like dude i i could get bailing busted at any moment i don't know what's coming in right now i'm gonna wall off my gateway to be completely safe i'm scared shitless let's just take some safety precautions and that did put me in a bit of an awkward position but uh at the end of the day i decided build phoenix to hard counter muters just one at a time while continuing to build my economy and just attacking with as many zealots as I can and hopefully we can hit just before the muters are out or even if the muters are popping if the zealots are already on the worker line they're going to kill plenty of stuff before the muters clean them up and it's going to ruin his already very small two base economy so that was kind of the whole thought process there all right guys so let's go into it we've got a pvp we're going up against a masters one player 4900 mmr and this is going to be nasty because this build order i have probably the least faith in it being solid at this MMR and since he knows what's coming I'm like ooh, let's see what the hell he does to dismantle me here I don't know if he's gonna play special um you know abuse as much as you like please good luck have fun um you know play as if you know I'm doing the build I don't mind I'm hoping my opponent does that and maybe shows us some of the weaknesses of it I managed to beat him counting on ladder yesterday but he didn't know what the hell he was going up against. He wasn't expecting it, right? And you can always get surprise wins, but if you're playing the repeat people you, that you are, when you're in Grandmaster, we all kind of start to know each other's names and you play the same opponents again and again, it's going to be a bit different. So we're going to be going for the one gate expand. Uh, we do want to take the second gas, of course, because we're going to assume we're going to get blocked by him. We don't know, but we're just going to assume that. Talk, even in the, the earlier game where we showed you guys this. Okay. Okay. So he's going for a two gate opening, guys. building a 
a zealot. But we'll cancel that. Oh, he has not got a second pile on yet, guys. That's definitely worrisome. <laughs> Alright, I'm still going to get the expansion, but... Oh no, he does have a second pylon. Okay, never mind. Oh my god, can you die, dude? Our probes are under attack. Good microbe I am, man. Oh shit. That's gonna be delayed. Alright, this guy's gonna go in there. Is there an expansion? Okay, he's expanding. Awesome, that's really good. I think he might just be playing straight Twilight, guys. All right. Okay, that's good. So we know we're not being all in. We could probably just cancel that shield battery. Uh, and let's go straight for charge. <clears throat> Beautiful. Yeah, yeah, he's just going hallucination. No big surprises there. All right, I'm gonna actually come around the back side, I think. Yeah, and see if we can grab some guys there. Okay, um, we're gonna go one, two, three gateways. I think you need a second gate if you don't know if they've expanded or not straight away, but otherwise we're just gonna do Twilight, three more gateways, and then take the third base. And all right. We're done with the research. Oh, we got one on the way out. Not bad. Whoops. Third base. Charge. Okay, I mean, the fact that I'm not building units is just stupid. That's, that's, the, that's the really dumb part of what I'm doing right now. Right? But I guess... Is it really that dumb? So he doesn't have a third. We just need to keep an eye on his unit production. See if... Oh, okay, there's one other big problem, which is he could have... Um, yeah. Okay, the thing is, we could run in and kill all of his workers, right? Yeah, I mean, if you just make sure you get charged quick enough, you can defend. One of our pylons okay, yeah, he's gonna go for the third. That I'm fine with. You sure you want some of this? There we go. This is, and this is where charge just becomes bullshit, right? Uh, holy shit, charge is disgusting. So this is this is the power spike um, of charge, which is so drastically disgusting. For this, there's like this point where zealots are the worst unit in the game, and then you get them, and they're like so frigging sick in any messy fight, right? Okay. Has he got a third started? Because if he doesn't, he's dead, right? Battery overcharge? Yep. That's what I wanted. I just wanted him to activate that. Yeah. 
Okay, we got it. So now we can go into a more standard game. Remember? Forge, Robo. I don't know why I'm building those, but I am. I mean, I should be able to still just hold down the Zealot key and all in him, especially since we got rid of battery overcharge. Yeah, that's so, so silly. So, <laughs> the thing is, like, So, I think if he's got to, he's got to have a proxy gate, and he's just got to, like, if he proxy gates me, I'm screwed, right? So I think, like, if I'm doing this, and I don't realize he snuck a probe out, and he's building a proxy gate there, and he just goes, like, four gate blink, and just, even, the thing is, I mean, he's, he's a bit behind on probes already, so his opening wasn't great. I guess I'm already a bit ahead, which is why it's an unfair example then. But, but basically, like, if they get the... the the, the gateway up on the front, that's what's scary. So there's the thing is, there's this window at like 5.30 where I don't have charge and I'm like, oh God, I'm so weak, right? And it's it's kind of awkward and stuff. Hmm. But there's also like, then charge kicks in and it's like, yeah, fuck it, doesn't matter. I feel like there's, there, there's definitely a window you can get abused. But I think you can even get charged quite early. Yeah. Alright guys, so I think, wait, we know that opening Oracle into charge is good versus Erg. We know that opening Phoenix into charge is amazing versus Terran. That's just like a solid, these are both solid styles, right, at pro level. And we're seeing how this translates into pro level. But translating to PvP, we saw it work in the last game, but I was a bit ahead in the early game. Let's watch against Barcode. We're playing a 5k Protoss player now. Is this truly a pre PvX build? Now, part of the build is from its very inception. The fact that you need to scout and react to said scouting. That's what a Stargate build is for. If you guys want to play Stargate and not react to anything, well, get ready to build cannons and full wall offs and go straight for void rays and carriers and stuff, right? You guys can play, you know, no scouting, no reacting sky toss. That's a, a very different thing. But I think right here with this, we're looking at like, hey, can I get info and react with it? And is it a really solid, just kind of base frame to be going up to Stargate into charge? And it absolutely is. The Zealot Printer is just so powerful, man. Zealot Printer go brrrr, meow, 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 meow. And then the Zealot just goes doo, 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 stabby stab. Like, it's just such a silly, fun thing. But it's powerful. And yes, you've got to be very aware, though, of the, the fact, though, that you do need to get that charge out on time and your gateway units. And this is a timing I feel like so many players who I watch out there and I coach, they're just not aware of it. Because how often do I watch Protoss players who... They kind of have some units which would be good if they were under aggression, they were getting attacked. Like, oh, uh, every map. One of our pylons is under enemy fire. So he's going core as well. So it looks like he's doing the same sort of build as me. Uh, he does have to be careful. I could gas steal him. But we're not going to do that just because it could mess my build up a little bit. Uh, we'll get that zealot building here. And it looks like he maybe has already gone for the expo then, yeah? Let's take a look. Yes, he has. Interesting. Okay. And this is fine. So this is kind of what we expect is to get blocked. And since I am a little bit higher than barcode... I'm actually totally at ease. Just kind of saying, okay, yep, that's annoying. Now, if he goes Stargate as well, though, that's where I'm going to be like, okay, maybe we go Phoenix instead of Oracle. It'd be fun to kind of change that up, wouldn't it? Right, let's cancel the Stalker. He's only on one gate, so I don't think he can be highly aggressive here. And let's just go out there and hide a little bit, shall we? Get that there in case it is an adept. Get the stalker on the way as well. Now I could have always run the zealot in as well. That is definitely something we could do. 
I'm gonna run the zealot around the top just checking for proxies. We're just gonna go Oracle because I think that's just a good solid way to do it. And um queue up another stalker here. Now we could get a second gateway, so I'm going to try and do the second gateway into the third base this time. See, and uh, go for charge a little bit later. So this is like a slight variation that I'm thinking might be better for PvP. Um, it will have a pretty greedy window still, because we're actually probably delaying charge even longer. But uh, it could pay off. Build the pylon up there. So we're seeing like, hey, can I just build a bunch of stalkers and actually be fine? You know, and just go straight in the third? Well, maybe. I really am not quite sure. See if we can kill anything. If there's a shield battery, of course. We're done with the research. You see dragons? Okay. I forgot to build a shield battery in the main. That's really important, guys. So at least we both messed up and took damage there. It's really important in this sort of one start, one gate uh, expand versus one gate expand. You have to assume they're going Oracle and you should be ready for it, okay? So that was really sloppy by me. Let's get the uh, Twilight Council straight away as well, by the way. And let's see if we can grab a main arting probe. Because there's shield batteries and stalkers on both bases. But you can often catch them in between the bases. Okay, so it looks like he's going to be trying to go blink now. Big blink push. Makes perfect sense, right? I'm on two gates. Let's see if we can get straight to charge now. So we've got one Stalker on each of those. Everything else will come down there. And we're going to try and just make... Oh! Oh, nice damage for him, but... Charge only starting at 5.30. I think definitely this is going to be too big of a window. It is destined. Where we could take damage. So, I definitely think that's a bit of an issue. Oh! It's like, all the chrono in the world ain't gonna get that in a quick enough time, where if he'd already hit me, I'd be in so much pro just so much trouble. Luckily for me, I think he's respectful of the, um... No. Oh, no, he's here. The enemy has discovered us. And he must be here, right? <laughs> I think. Okay. Alright. Because he's still got two oracles, we're going to make sure we leave a stalker at each base. Okay. Oh, we could do, um... Right. We could do stasis traps. Oh, shit. Okay. Thankfully, Zealots are awesome bullshit units. So he's doing a big two base uh, blink all in, guys. I think we have enough Zealots, right? So what do we do? Remember, once we get past that scary point in the game, we get Robo and Gasses. So 
that we can go into all the normal things that we need for a normal game, right? I think I prefer the previous version where we just go Twilight into, um, what do you guys think? Uh, Twilight into the, and three more gateways. I think that's a little bit better. Get up to four gates and get charge a bit quicker and then go for the third base. Cause <clears throat> just getting to charge there earlier, it's going to give you so much safety and you're still s skipping the gases. So you still get a huge boost to your mineral income. Yeah, this is kind of weird, man. I'm surprised. I I, I think I'm going to actually be trying this on my main account on, on ladder in PvP just to see what I can get away with. Because I'm trying to get better at one gate expand anyway, and I, I kind of suck at it. But I think this could be really cool. Just um, have this dirty curveball surprise charge lot style, which when you play really top tier players, I think it's really going to be about like the positioning and the blink micro that makes it makes me look silly when i try this but i think it, it needs that exceptional fine touch with just like the builds being really tight the stalker micro and positioning being really tight and the picking of the fights and then we'll get to see my my zealots not find their way in but uh yeah i think it's there's a lot of these styles out there that are i think quite a bit harder to counter with the the mainstream styles than they are to execute for you as the uh the baboon who's printing zealots and I think that's a good good reason to go do it. So we're going to give Barcode one more go. Give him the repeat go. See if he can beat it. I am going to change the build from last game. Because remember last game we experimented with the, uh, the, the two gate into the third base. Delaying the twilight. Did not like it at all. Um, unless I see specific aggression coming. Like I'd rather just build units consistently out of one gateway. And, um, and kind of go from there. Oh, Jesus, can we get that pile now? Come on, man. All right, two gate opening. Interesting. And he's chronoing probes. Wow, okay. I don't want him to be able to proxy, so I'm actually just going to follow that probe. I think it's worth making sure he can't proxy me. Now, he might have another probe out there, of course. back interesting stalkers on the way we'll chrono it our probes are under attack okay i'm just gonna build a pile on here and then we're gonna go in see what we're up against i am here in the shadows shield battery's kind of late but we've got a Zealot, so Zealot plus the Stalker and the Ramp. Okay, 
Okay. Ah, he's making his own one. All right, I'm just going to make a Phoenix this game because I'm a little late on starting it anyway. And who's got a third one on it? This one. So we're just going to go for about four Phoenix. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, let's just go in for some damage, shall we? I doubt he builds a second one. No proxy for you. Let's get the gateways up. Oh, he's got two oracles. Hello. Okay, very, very useful information. Very useful information. Okay. Hello, mate. So I think he's feeling like, okay, I've been spotted. You know, I'm not able to get my proxy gate up. I need to just do it like macro. And that's totally fine. Oh shit, did he get, get one? No, I didn't. I don't actually have that many gateways. Shit. Oh shit. I was like, hey, we've got charge already almost up. Oh, that's that's a lot of gateways actually. Never mind. I did have more gateways than I realized. Okay, we've got nine gateways. That's awesome. Make it ten. Oh, what if he went DTs somehow? Ooh. Do so you not, not have blink, or did he already use it, maybe? Oh, nice! He's gonna recall to try and catch me. Very cute, very cute. Okay, so we're gonna have some zealots up there. The supply block! Oh! I don't know. Do we just take a fourth base? I'm supply blocked. I have nothing else I can do. Why not? Oh no! It's not good. <laughs> oh my god! All right, all right. This is this is real awkward now. Um, sentry there. Okay, there we go. Oh my god. And my work account's actually lower than I thought it was. It's only at 50 right now, guys. At least he was kept off a third for a real long time. Oof. Run, run, run. Okay. Let's get the Robo. Templar Archives. Oh, 
mined out of mineral. Mineral field depleted. These guys are up there. You guys go there, you guys go there. Upgrade is ready for you. Has he got upgrades? He's got plus two. Oh! Zealots are in both mineral lands. We should have it. Yeah. Swarm, 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 swarm. Charge, most underrated ability. Start getting to charge. It's legit. It's legit. GG's. Um, I am higher MMR than these guys, of course, but still, I think it's it's um surprisingly holding up really well into like 5k plus. So I gotta say, pretty cool. Um, that's the matchup where I think it's most scary. But I'm sure I'd run into players who do certain all-ins and stuff, and I do get, like, it's just like, ugh, you kind of just have to go blink or something like that. I'm sure there's situations and we just weren't encountering them today. So, um, cool to see, though, that it does definitely have a place in the matchup. How much of a surprise it is, or it only works in certain, me certain metas, I'm not quite sure. So, for high-level PvP, still a big question mark on that build order. I wouldn't super advise it. But if you're just trying to learn fundamentals, I mean, you could just start with it. If you're in bronze, silver, gold, up to platinum, you might be able to use that and probably can in all three matchups. So I think it's actually really awesome to see. Um, yeah, very interesting to see how it plays out. Mass Zealot is so cheap and just does so much damage. But uh, I hope you guys enjoyed the showing you guys Thanks some beginner Bezos advanced parts. how to use Stargate into Zealot. And I think, is it rock solid? to just always mass zealot in every scenario. No. Am I more focused on doing a big timing attack off those zealots today, showing you guys this? Yes. Um, but I think what we saw in some of those is the moment I got past a scary point, I would just be like, drop robos, drop gases, go to the next phase. So there's a lot of longevity to it. And no matter what, as a fundamental skill, opening Stargate, scouting your opponent while doing light pressure, and then being a little bit greedy, but then turning that just into a shitload of gateways and charge, making zealots it's such a solid way to develop your understanding of how to get your gateway count up how to get everything going how to kick ass it makes such a big difference so go kick some fucking ass guys thank you very much for the love hope you